Hey everybody, Guy from Ajax here. Welcome to another three random insights video based on the um, individual card stats tracking tool I'm developing called Splinter Coach, which is set to be launched uh, for the public to subscribe to within the next 30 days. So without further ado, let's jump into um, today's three random insights. Okay, the first one I'm gonna look at, I was kinda, kinda looking at things and I was looking at uh, sorting a bit by rule set. So I'm sitting here in the summoners tab right now. And if I go to rule set, and I was kind of interested in terms of briar patch, you know, you know, when every monster has thorns, you know, how should I be playing those a little bit? So when I do the search by briar patch, the first thing that you notice as you kind of go through here is that you know, a lot of like sub 500 records for me, maybe some right at 500. There's one summoner that is significantly outperforming the others for me, and that's Yasek, right? Performing at six and one at an 857 winning percentage. And so let's narrow in on which monsters, and by the way, this isn't gonna surprise you, but it's just interesting seeing the data, which monsters am I pairing with Yasek and Briar Patch to be winning the most matches? So, or to have such a strong win rate. So if I go to monsters, I narrow in on fire, and then I go to rule sets, briar patch, and let it spin for a second. Not a surprise. Lean into a lot of these close range uh, archery monsters like Lava Launcher and Molten Ash Golem that you can put in the tank position when need be. Obviously, Sanash, she pairs so well with Yasik, but look at a Yasik plus these three cards. Lean into those, which is really interesting. Um, in term, other than that, you know, I, I'm not, there aren't really any other cards that are getting a large enough delta or sample size to have anything really super interesting. One thing I am realizing, I didn't look at neutrals. Let's just look at neutrals real quick for Briar Patch and see if there's anything from a win percentage there that might be pairing well with Yasik. I'm not seeing too much here, honestly. So, yeah, not really. So, again, if you're looking at this Briar Patch, consider leaning into Yasik and consider playing. Um, these three cards, Lava Launcher, Molten Ash Golem, and Countess Sinash. They seem to give you a bit of a bit of an advantage there. So that's uh, that's insight number one. Briar Patch, Yasik, and the Archery Monsters. Uh, insight number two, um, as I was looking, one thing I noticed is in terms of win percentage for my summoners, if we go to overall and look at lifetime, um, one of the summoners that I'm performing not great with is Tarsa, right? Look at that, 38 and 60, a 388 winning percentage. You know, she's widely not, you know, fire is widely not considered maybe overall one of the stronger meta meta uh, elements in the game. But still, I'm wondering, you know, why am I, you know, performing so poorly with Tarsa? And then when I looked at things, there's a range where, at least with the way I'm playing, that I should be playing Tarsa, and it's a mana cap range thing. So if you look at this, overall, 388 winning percentage. Okay, 368 in low mana battle, so she's not performing great there. It gets even worse in the 20 to 29 range, a 231 winning percentage. 30 to 39, we're kind of starting to get better. 409 winning percentage, 9 and 13. But then 40 to 49, we're just barely below 500. 7 and 8 with a 467 winning percentage. And then 50 to 60, we actually get a winning percentage here at 9 and 7, 563. And then I don't think I've played her in 9. Yeah, I haven't played her in any unlimited mana cap battle since I started tracking. So I guess one insight that I'm at least picking up for me personally, and you might want to look into this for yourself, is is Tarsa, you know, do you want to kind of keep focused in on her in more of like the 50 to 60, even 40 to 49 range? and kind of avoid her a bit more in some of these lower mana cap ranges. So that's insight number two. Uh, insight number three, I decided to really drill in on monsters 
and look specifically at the wands out rule set. I'm really, really intrigued by the wands out rule set. And a couple interesting things popped up when I saw that, when I looked into here. First of all, look at this. Sorting by winning percentage, look at the Rune Mancer Flory. 10 and 0. I'm undefeated through 10 games playing Rune Mancer Flory in the Wands Out rule set. And what's really interesting about that is I think you bring a second type of attack to Wands Out. You know, she has archery and magic. That clearly is something that seems to be working. The Sudai Shaman as well, too. So you're seeing a bit of an earth theme here. But then as I scroll down, these high win rate monsters, um, Venari Spellsmith is in here. But look at this. Mycelic Slip Spawn, 12 and 3. So again, don't be afraid to lean into Earth when you're uh, when you're playing with Wands out. That obviously makes a lot of sense because of Obsidian and even Immortalis. But the data is really proving this out. Look at the Spirit Hoarder, fifteen and five, pairing. And you'll kind of I'll, I'm gonna I'll loop the Spirit Hoarder here at the end. But some of its most played cards are in Earth, which tells me it's getting paired a lot, probably with Earth in these um, in these uh, Wands out rule sets. But even something like Regal Periton, look at that, 19 and 9. So um, when I sort by in Goblin Psychic, 9 and 4. So again, you know, it's it's pretty kind of a duh insight that, you know, lean into Earth, lean into Immortalis and Obsidian and Wands out. But but look at these wins. It's it's really, really proving itself out uh, right there. And then what's also interesting too is you can kind of see the Rune Mancer Flory with a double type of attack. 10 and 0, and then you don't have to go too much further down here in Agor Longtail, which also brings in magic and melee. I'm 7 and 2 playing with that one. So I'd say your two main insights with Wands Out are number one, lean into Earth. It makes a lot of sense. But number two, if you have the mana to do it, play these, play the Agor Longtails and play the Rune Mancer Flores. Play the, uh, the double attack monsters in Wands Out because they make a lot of sense. And then just to kind of bring this home for um, Wands Out, let's just look at rule set for the summoners. And we'll go here. And there it is, you know, Immortalis is 12 and six. Quix is 10 and six. And then Obsidian is, you know, three and three. But overall, you can see right there, there's 25 wins to just 15 losses when you're considering Immortalis, Obsidian, or Quick. So those are really the summoners to lean into. You know, when I try nerfing magic, six and 11 with Thaddeus doesn't seem to be quite as effective. And I don't really, you know, play with many of these others. Um, you know, I guess Grandmaster Wraith could be interesting because of the void armor. I am two and oh, so maybe give that one a bit of a larger sample size. But again, recapping the three random insights of tonight, Briar Patch, go with Yassic plus the, the close range archery monsters like Molten Ash Golem and Lava Launcher and, and Sinash is playing well there as well. Uh, the second one, Tarsa, she seems to perform better in higher mana counts than lower mana counts. And then the third one on Wands Out, lean into Earth or Quicks if you have to, and then look at those double attack type of monsters, specifically Rune Mancer Flore and Agor Longtail. Okay, hope everyone enjoyed this video. Have a great day, bye-bye.